Hello, I'm Dr. Malia Tate with Grassroots Healthcare, and you're joining us uh, live via the Google Internet uh, broadcast that we're doing from our clinic here uh, on 91st and Sheridan. We're located at 6530 East 91st Street, and we're a clinic about health and wellness and also about uh, lowering the cost for patients with high deductible or without insurance. Uh, our clinic is open 8.30 to 5, Monday through Friday, and we're excited to have you on our show today. Uh, today, I'd like to um, talk to you once again um, about hormones and, and your health. Um, basically, just your endocrine system. We're going to be talking about some things that you can do to help regulate and balance your endocrine system and why these things are safe and effective. We're going to be telling you some things about uh, patients that we've had here this week who ha we've had good success with. Uh, and then uh, also kind of introducing you to some of the methods that we use and making available to you some easy ways to get your hormones tested and talking to you about how to get in to see your physician uh, or come here if you don't have a doctor uh, and we'll look at your hormonal health and try to help you with getting your weight in check and working on things that make you feel like you're living at your very best. So um, without uh, any delay, I just want to go over real quick with you guys some, some things. If you want to uh, comment on anything that we're doing today, um, you can go down to the uh, button below the screen. There's a place where you can click in and, and you can feed in comments live or questions live to the show today. So those of you who are joining us live, uh, we broadcast our show, Grassroots Healthcare Wellness Show, every second and fourth Friday of the month at 1230. So any of those that of you that are interested in learning some of the biochemical things, some of the more um, uh, cutting edge things that are coming out now with regards to how your hormone supplements um, may be affecting your health or how your hormonal decline may be affecting your health and vitality. Um, or even if you're just interested in um, uh, weight loss in general or getting in a better frame of mind or wanting to do more uh, with your body, being able to perform better if you're having problems with fatigue. Um, we address those issues and more here at Grassroots. We're a primary care office. Um, I'm Dr. Malia Tate. I'm an MD. And we also have our very own nurse practitioner, Kelly Compton. Uh, Kelly Compton Ratton now. Uh, she just got married last weekend or a couple weekends ago. So we're getting used to, to that. Um, so we have two providers here. We're here, uh, like I said, from 8.30 to 5, um, Monday through Thursday, and then Kelly's here until noon on Fridays, and I'm here on Fridays as well, um, all day. So our office number is 918-878-7733, and we'd love to meet you and have you uh, come to our clinic. And, and if you know anyone who doesn't have insurance, who has a high deductible, our visits start at $59 plus a $20 new patient fee. Um, for simple sick visits, and they can range anywhere from 59 to 99, depending on the extensiveness uh, of, of, and the complicated nature of what we're going over with you. So anyway, we'd love to meet you. All right, so moving a little further into the show, we're going to be talking about um, some of the biochemical breakdown of uh, fructose, high fructose corn syrup, and sucrose versus just the natural um, glucose that we get, some of the changes that have happened since the 1980s whenever um, we went low fat in this country and um, the expected outcomes and the actual outcomes that we're seeing and why maybe some of these things have happened and, and what we base our policies off of uh, and why this needs to change. So I'm going to be sharing some of that with you. Um, before we go into that though, I do want to um, make a note. Um, our producer has asked me to I'll go over with you. There's three buttons below that you can push. One of them leads to our um, email. Um, our concierge uh, will address you if you have any uh, information that you'd like, more information about the clinic, about what we do here to see if we're a good fit with you. Uh, those kind of things, you can you can push that button and it'll allow you to send us a message and we'll, we'll get back to you. Um, the other button is for um, or if you want to purchase uh, hormonal uh, salivary testing, you can push that button and with PayPal or using your credit card information, it will allow you to um, fill out some forms and then purchase um, this saliva test to test your basic hormonal function. So uh, those tests are um, close to, I think they're 149, 150, uh, and you can get your salivary testing done. You'll get a, we'll, that'll generate a a report that comes to us and then we will follow up and let you know 
um, kind of subsequently some of the abnormalities on the report that you can take to a physician near you that knows about uh, hormonal health or you can come in and see us um, uh, for um, specific recommendations that we can give you for your hormones. Um, and then uh, there's um, one more button that allows you to join our sugar-free me Facebook group. And there's a lot of very supportive guests on there. If any of you missed last week, last episode, um, we had a guest that used to be one of our patients who's in that group and also the founder of that group, Sarah Solman, who talked to us about some great recipes and ideas to get off of, of sugar and how it's changed her life and uh, many of her uh, clients that have gotten off sugar, some of the good things about that. And it's a very, very supportive group. So if you're looking for some support and ideas and just problem solving uh, from a group of people who are kind of motivated to do the same thing that you are, um, then I encourage you to, enjoy, to join that group. So you can just press that button also and we'll get you involved in the group that we're um, traveling through with. And I've gotten lots of great ideas through there. All right. so. Um, moving into the next segment um, of our show, I wanted to go over with you guys a little bit of what we've talked about in several of last week's episodes. Um, the first being that the health of your liver makes a great big difference on whether or not you're able to lose weight. Many of us know, many women know that as our hormones start to decline somewhere in our 30s, even as early as our early 20s these days, um, we, we notice some changes um, in our ability to lose weight. It's easier before when we have more muscle mass, as our hormones start to change, things begin to get harder. Even if we exercise or eat right, it seems like it takes longer for us to um, burn off the weight, that our metabolism may be slower. These women are experiencing um, more and more fatigue, um, even to the point of feeling heaviness in their muscles. And um, we're not just talking about women here, we're talking about um, men as well are having changes in their hormones and in their metabolism that are making it more and more difficult for them to lose weight. One of the big um, things that I've, I've learned in the last several weeks, and we'll be doing a lecture on it tomorrow here at the clinic that's live. Um, uh, it starts at uh, 12.45 to 1, somewhere in there. We're going to have um, a lecture done by one of the physicians here in Tulsa on the liver metabolism and, and why it's important to our weight loss and ways that we can start to clean out our system so that we'll begin to metabolize and burn fat. But one of the most exciting things that I learned uh, and I've shared with many of my patients is that um, the liver um, is the first thing that the blood supply goes through after it absorbs nutrients from the digestive system. So the liver does most of the cleaning out of any of our, of our blood before all that uh, nutrition and, and um, all the nutrients that we're getting go into the body, it has to go through the liver first. And the liver's main job is to take care of that. Because we've been, um, we've been putting things in our liver for years now that are chemical in nature and not really um, natural as far as the body's ability to break them down. We do see fatty changes in the liver in many of our patients. It's called non-alcoholic uh, steatosis or um, it's virtually a cirrhosis that's caused by non-alcohol sugars. Cirrhosis is caused by alcohol sugars, um, the traditional form that we talk about mostly, and then there are types of cirrhosis that can be caused by sugars that are non-alcoholic. Now there's many, many different kinds of sugars. Um, we're going to go over a little bit, a few of the different kinds today, and then delve more deeply um, in future episodes of some of the other ones, because it can be very confusing when you're reading the back of labels about what, what you're looking for and what you're trying to avoid. Um, but the liver cleans out your body, and the most exciting thing that I learned was that if the liver is um, unable to clean out your blood, then all the things that the liver used to clean out are going to then become deposited in your heart, your brain, or your kidney. So that's the next organs uh, that, that's going to filter out those things. And those are some pretty important organs. We really don't want buildup of chemicals in those organs. And so what our body begins to do is lay down layer of fat around our heart. That's important to know because we've all heard of the stories of doctors who've done autopsies that have said, you know, oh, their heart was just, you know, encased in layers of fat. Um, and we've all heard stories too that if we have increased obesity around our inter internal organs, that kind of obesity versus the kind that we carry in our, our hips and thighs and those kind of things is actually an increased risk for cardiovascular disease and heart attack. And so what I'd like to propose to you that 
again, is that the body is using these layers of fats to act as sort of a pseudo or fake organ to absorb um, the toxins that are getting through our liver now into the bloodstream and lower the level of toxicity in our bloodstream. And, and so when we lay down that layer of fat around our middle, you know, we need to remember that it's there to protect us. All right. So understanding that, if we're going to eliminate the fat and start to, you know, just release that fat into our body system, then one of the things that we really need to make sure of is that our liver is clear of any kind of congestion or what's going on with it. Now, every cell in your body regenerates new cells. So, so even if there's damage to certain parts of the body, and, and the liver is one that is amazingly able to regenerate, if we change what we're feeding our body and if we change what kind of things are going through, we can see improvements in um, the functions of our liver. So if we've gotten to the point where we're gaining a bunch of weight, we can't seem to get the weight off. As we clean out the liver, we're going to be able to see um, forward progress in that. And we had a patient just this past week who attended this lecture that we're doing um, again tomorrow uh, about a month ago. And she came to see me for follow-up. And we had been doing some work with her to lose weight. And she hadn't been able to. But then after doing uh, a liver cleanse program for several weeks, um, she's been able to see the weight begin to drop off again. And so she's lost another 12 to 15 pounds, if I remember correctly. And so we're very proud of her, and my congratulations go out to her. But more than that, I'm excited about seeing progress because I know that I can use that progress to help my patients to, to reach a better, a better place within themselves. So we're going to um, begin to understand why this happens. Now, uh, I'd like to go into the biochemistry with you of this a little bit. I can't completely... But glucose, sucrose, um, which is sugar, and high fructose corn syrup or fructose are all metabolized differently in the liver. Um, back when we were humans, um, you know, many, many, many uh, thousand years ago, uh, about we consumed about 15 uh, grams of fructose per day, mostly in the form of plants and um, and other fruits and things like that. Is how we how we uh, did obtain some natural uh, fructose. Um, as they began to substitute the high fructose corn syrup, it's become extremely cheap. And high and fructose is metabolized different in our liver than many of the other natural sugars, glucose, things like this. Um, if you look at Italy and Japan, um, back in the 60s and 70s, uh, they did a study called the Seven Country Studies, and they showed a difference in the amount of fat intake, dietary fat intake, and the cardiovascular health of the population. If you look at those countries, they also consume very low amounts of um, sugar or uh, fructose in their diets. Um, Italy has a lot of pasta, but that pasta has glucose in it, which is not very sweet and is metabolized in your liver to something that the liver can contain um, called um, glycogen. So the liver is able to store glycogen. We have little kids who have glycogen storage disease those little kids um, with that, their livers get really, really big, but they never develop any cirrhosis because the liver is made to store um, carbohydrate in the form of glycogen. However, whenever we metabolize sucrose and um, uh, high fructose corn syrup in large quantities, these lead to cross-linking of the proteins in the liver. And that is what begins to cause um, the fatty changes and the steatosis in the liver and the non-alcoholic and um, cirrhotic changes in your liver, which make it less effective at doing its job, which is to clean out um, things. And I'd like to go more into the biochemistry of that, and, and we will in the future. But the main thing that I wanted to get across to you is that they're not equal. They're not being, um, they're not being treated in the liver um, and stored the same way. They're using different forms of, of energy to break down the different chemical bonds that are there, and, and that's leading to some of the, um, the problems that we're seeing. So all that to say, when high fructose corn syrup did become available, it's much, much sweeter than sugar. So what we would think is that they're using less of the high fructose corn syrup um, to make things sweet, and that would, would help us out. But that's not the case at all. We're actually consuming more and more each year of the high fructose corn syrup. And because it's so um, cheap, it's found its way into lots and lots of uh, different kinds of foods, including um, hamburger buns, barbecue sauce. Basically, it's, it's becoming pervasive in, in every type of food because it's, it's so much 
um, sweeter and also has a much higher shelf life. Back in the 1980s, when the recommendations were made for us to lower our dietary fat intake um, from uh, to lower it by 10%, you can watch as the American population has lowered that by 10%. The thinking was that if we lowered our fat intake, then we would lower our cardiovascular disease. Exactly the opposite has happened. We're um, increasing in our cardiovascular disease, and we're finding that the linkages between the proteins um, in the liver and our inability to metabolize some of the chemicals that we're taking in um, are causing uh, changes in our inside of our arteries, um, as well as the changes in the in the liver. The same way that sugar, um, high fructose corn syrup, and sugar um, can cause caramelization on like your steak on the grill, that kind of thing. So, what, what we're trying to to determine now, we're trying to go back and see why the decisions were made like they were made and begin to go forward and get a better outcome because uh, heart disease was um, supposed to have been lowered by the changes that we made and actually um, in reality it, it went up in, as well as obesity. So um, one of the things that we're seeing when people consume high fructose corn syrup and sugar is that some of the hormones in our body um, are, are inhibited um, and then triglycerides are also elevated, and this is leading to some of the um, congestive problems in our in our blood vessels and in our liver. Um, so uh, that's quite a lot to share with you today. But um, in regards to our hormonal aspect of our health, those of us that are having problems with um, uh, fatigue, uh, with weight gain, with hair loss, um, anxiety, um, depression. Uh, some of the things that, that seem to be hormonal, they certainly hit us harder as our hormonal axis begins to shift right before um, pre-menopause and menopause times. Um, increased um, sugar in the body causes a decrease in one of the sex hormone binding globulins. The sex hormone binding globulin is there is to bind up excess estrogen and testosterone. Um, but what's happening as those levels are lowered, uh, we're seeing um, an imbalance between the progesterone and estrogen or um, in the testosterone levels of, of our patients, or the testosterone is becoming more converted to estrogen. And so as those hormones are lowered, um, as the uh, sex hormone binding globulin is lowered, we're starting to see increased levels uh, of the estrogen and, and, and an imbalance in our systems. And that's leading to more um, problems with in anxiety, with in insomnia, with irritability, um, difficulty concentrating, those kind of things. And so what we're trying to do with our, with our patients, many of our patients, we've seen improvements in their cognitive abilities, in their ability to um, retain their train of thought, their concentration. Um, we're seeing their brain fog go down um, just from the simple act of getting the poison out of their system. And it hasn't been easy. If you talk to several of my patients who've done this, they've um, experienced headaches, um, changes in their um, digestive system, all kinds of changes throughout their whole body whenever they go off of sugar. It takes them about 21 days, but the worst of it is usually during the first week. Um, one of my patients, and we haven't been able to um, fully figure out why, has experienced increased um, problems with uh, sleep, but most patients report, especially after making it through the 21 days, uh, improved um, sleep. So some things that um, some things that we are suggesting to our patients are more natural therapies like uh, chromium, um, some uh, chase berry teas, um, TMG, and things like that to bind up excess estrogens in the body, especially for those who have estrogen dominance. Uh, these patients are um, uh, experiencing better health, a more level levelness of mood. Uh, loss of, of a lot of their angst and anxiety as their hormone levels begin to regulate themselves out. They do a lot of clean eating, no processed food. Many of them go off gluten initially and then add it back in to see how they feel. Um, and uh, anyway, we're seeing great luck with our patients coming off medicine. And, and more than luck, it's, it's just basically people are waking up to the fact that high fructose corn syrup in this country and sucrose are essentially poison, the white poison. So we treat them that way. This includes most breads. Um, we allow our patients to have brown rice and things like that, uh, brown rice bread. Um, and uh, anyway, we're seeing great success here with those kind of changes. It's not for the faint hearted and we're glad to put you on medicine if you'd prefer. 
but we'd rather see our patients get well than keep them on medicines and coming back to see us every year. Um, I'll never forget the first patient that I had in my office when she said, Dr. Kate, I don't need any medicine. I'd seen her a month before for um, severe uh, difficulty concentrating to the point that she thought she may have ADD and also um, pretty severe feelings of overwhelm, overwhelmingness and depression. And to have her come in my office um, after going off of sugar, gluten, processed food, and I think she went off dairy and soy, and to hear her say, Dr. Kate, I don't need any medicine. I can think more clearly than I've been able to think in eight years, and my depression is gone. And to hear my male patient who came in just to lose weight say, you know, Doc, my brain fog cleared up, and, and the depression I've been having for the past year that I thought was from my divorce is gone, and that's something I really didn't expect to happen. Um, those were priceless doctor-patient encounters for me, so I'm looking for more of that. So if that's something that interests you, um, if you're having uh, problems with your uh, with your hormones, either from um, loss of libido or, or some of the things we mentioned earlier, like low energy and ability to lose weight, um, hair loss, fatigue, anxiety, depression, insomnia, um, many of those things. If you're having any symptoms like that, um, we want to treat you. We want to see you here. We want to be able to help you isolate what may be some of the causes of it and to work with you and find in a better answer. We have different um, saliva tests for uh, insomnia, for adrenal fatigue, for patients who have been under chronic levels of stress, which happens to be a good, great, greater than half of our patients are under um, severe stress. And the other half of them are just under the normal stress levels. So if, if that interests you or anybody you know, um, please send them to our clinic. Our number is 918-878-7733. And again, for those of you who may be just catching the tail end of this or skipping through, I just want to let you know you can order the hormone saliva panel um, and through PayPal on, by clicking one of the buttons below. If you just want more information, um, you, can, you can check for it down there. And also, um, if you're interested in uh, joining our Sugar Free Me, uh, Facebook group, Beautiful Sugar Free Me, um, and getting some support as you come off of sugar, uh, however you want to do it. That group's great. They're beautiful people, beautiful souls that will be glad to support you. So thank you so much for joining us today uh, at Grassroots Healthcare. Um, we try to give you a good idea of what we've been doing over here. Um, and so um, we'd be super glad to have you as our patient and also just want to say that um, we're interested in you coming off medicines if all possible and living your best, most well life. Thank you.